Good morning, boys and girls. My name is Miss Lori and I work for Aero Pest Control. You might think that a pest control company is something that kills bugs and we do, but we only kill bad bugs. So I want you to think about what is a good bug and what is a bad bug. So the first thing I wanna do is let's talk about what an insect really is. Well, an insect has antennas. They have three body parts, a head, a thorax, and an abdomen. Most of them have two sets of wings, a hard wing on the top and maybe a filming wing, filmy wing underneath. And they have six legs, one, two, three, four, five, six. Now, if they have eight legs, they are not an insect. So, can you tell me what is a good bug? All right, well, Ellie, she says that a butterfly is a good bug because it doesn't hurt anybody. But Lucy, she says it's bees because bees pollinate flowers. And without bees, we wouldn't have honey or pretty flowers. Well, what is a bad bug? Oh, a bad bug would be a bug that might would hurt you or it would interfere with our lives. Can you name a few? Well, did you think of a bad bug? Judas said a bad bug are termites because termites can eat your house up and that can be true. But termites can also be a good bug. Let me tell you how. Well, when termites are in the forest or the woods, they help break down injured trees. When a tree gets hurt, it puts out invisible pheromone smells and insects flock to it, beetles and termites, and they start eating the tree. Now, they eat it, and guess what? When termites eat wood, do you know what they poop out? They poop out wood. And all that goes back down into the ground and it fertilizes the ground. So when the trees all eaten up and gone, there's a big space so that the sunlight can come down and the water and a new tree could grow. So in the forest, termites are a good bug. But when you see them in your house, it is not good because they do eat the wood in your house and we do not want that. So termites can be a bad bug when they're in your house. Okay, well we have another good bug. Let's think about this one. Butterflies, oh, they are so good. Butterflies are important and so are bees. They go from flower to flower and they pollinate so that we can have good fruits and vegetables. And without them, this would not happen. So look at these pretty butterflies. We have some, look at the colors. Some of them are camouflage. But do you know that butterflies come out during the day, but moths come out at night? Well, we thought that butterflies are good, but sometimes, what if you had butterflies just going all over the classroom and landing on you and little caterpillars, the larva crawling on you? Would they be good then? No. And there are some moths that get into your pantry and they eat your food and contaminate it. Well, those aren't good butterflies or moths. So sometimes we have to get rid of those and we have to use special chemicals to do that. So we do not want that to happen. So when you see that, be sure you call a professional person. Well, did you know that some of the wings of butterflies and moths are used to make dye for paints and fabrics? Dragonflies are another good bug. Why? Because the adults eat lots of mosquitoes and mosquitoes are bad bugs. So we want to have lots of dragonflies around, but not only the adult dragonfly is a good bug, the nymph is also a good bug because the nymphs also eat the mosquito larva so the mosquitoes can't get big. So we want to make sure whenever we see a dragonfly, we thank them for eating all those mosquitoes. Another bug that we can, um, that helps with um, mosquitoes and other bad bugs would be a praying mantis. Remember the praying mantis, it takes its two arms in the front and it puts them together and it looks like they're praying. That's how it gets its name. 
So we like praying mantises as well. One more good bug, the ladybug. The ladybug is a very good bug in that it eats another bug called an aphid. Now aphids like to get onto crops and your flowers and they make a hole in the leaf and then they suck the juice out and then the juice gets all over and it gets it makes it have mold and stuff on your plants. So ladybugs help keep the aphid numbers down and keeps them in check so that they don't hurt your plants. So ladybugs, check, good bug. Bugs that would be bad. Another one would be if you have a really nice apple and you had this little worm crawling in that apple, would that be a good bug or a bad bug? Because nobody would want to eat an apple with like a little worm crawling out of it. So that would be, it would then be a bad bug, even though usually it's not. But if it's in your apple and it interferes with your lifestyle, then it becomes a bad bug. Well, Another thing that bugs can do is they destroy crops. So when the crops are out in the field and they get bugs on them, we need to spray them so that we can kill them so that we can have good food to eat. That would be when it interferes in our lifestyle, that's how you would consider it a bad bug. Well, insects weren't always a problem to people, but they became a health threat when people began to getting careless with their garbage and their waste, and that attracted rodents and insects. Well, the rats feed on the garbage, and guess what? The rats have fleas. Way back in the 14th century, the fleas were so bad because the rodents were so bad that they came into the houses and the fleas bit the people. This is how they got the plague. One third of the people died because of this plague and it was all due to that little flea. Well, there are three kinds of rodents that are around us. The first one is the house mouse. It is so tiny, just the size of a little dime, and it can get into your house. It can um, destroy a lot of your food. It can chew, it can get into your cereal, and um, we do not want it to get into our food because it TTs and poo poos in there, and it does not make our food safe to eat at all. Another one that we have is called a roof rat. So the roof rat and the Norway rat are the two big rats. Now, if you think about a roof, most of the roof rats, they, they're the ones you see on the telephone poles that they can climb really high. Now, the Norway rat, they like to dig holes and burrows down into the ground. And so neither one of them are really good, except for they do eat a lot of garbage. So that helps get rid of some of that garbage, but we don't want any of them inside our house, do we? When people began living in houses, the all-time bad bug became a problem, the cockroach. Well, is a cockroach really a bad bug? Well, it's a bad bug when it's in your home, but even the lowly cockroach can be a good bug depending on where it is and what it's doing. The cockroach can break down waste materials. They love filth, and most often they're found in big numbers around garbage. Well, cockroaches play a part in the food chain as well. They are eaten by some spiders. In some cultures, people even eat cockroaches. The cockroach was used for medicine until the 1890s. They were even crushed and put in people's ears to cure ear aches. Well, the roaches that we have today, we do not want in our houses because they can get in and contaminate our houses. They also help carry diseases. And for people that are sick with asthma and breathing problems, they add to that. So we do not want their waste in our house. There are two kinds of roaches that we really see a lot of. The big roach, the one that comes into your house that flies in at night, that's called an American roach. And that was the picture that I was showing you. The American roach, it only comes in when it's cold. You know, roaches are cold-blooded. So when it's warm, 
they, they stay outside. But when it's cold, they can just come right on in. And that's why you usually see them more in the winter. Well, the German roach is that little bitty roach that comes in and there's hundreds and thousands. Once they get in, they just start multiplying like crazy. Those roaches are very dirty and that's the one that really lives inside a lot that we want to get rid of. Did you know that a roach can live without its head for seven days? That's right, seven days, because it has something called spiracles down its sides that it actually breathes in. So when its head's cut off, it doesn't matter because the nose is not on its head. You know, cockroaches, they're able to sense the weather, geological changes such as earthquakes shortly before they occur. Fossils of cockroaches have been found dating back 350 million years ago. This was before the dinosaur age when cold and gas were found, formed. Well, their bodies, they have radar-like senses to detect movement around them. And the cockroach has a highly developed sense of smell and sight. They also detect movement and mo moisture. With their highly developed senses, they account for the fact that that's why they have survived for so long. How do we tell if something is wet? Well, we feel it, don't we? Well, a roach doesn't even have to touch something to detect that it, um, it's wet or has moisture. It can sense the moisture without touching. It has compound eyes which see in many different directions all at once and it has organs that detect even the most minute air movement around them and we already said that they are cold-blooded and they assume the temperature is around them so whatever the temperature is outside that's what they are whatever the temperature is inside that's what they are it's kind of like snakes that are cold-blooded well, from every egg capsule that the roach lays, it lays it, it's called an otheca, and 25 to 30 little roaches may be born. Well, an adult cockroach can call, crawl through a crack as thin as a nickel, and the nymphs or the babies can pass through the crack the thickness of just a piece of paper. That's how little they are, and that's how much space they need to get into your house. Well, the cockroach, he can adapt to the environment all around him. He can go without food and water for a long length of time. Roaches can survive several days without water and several weeks without food, as long as there's water present. Well, one roach could probably survive on this cornflake for a whole month. Wow, it doesn't take very much to feed them, does it? Roaches were probably not considered bad until people became sophisticated and discovered that they carried all those diseases and filth. They're responsible for those allergies as well. But there are ways to control these insects. Well, you could do it as a mechanical way. That means that you could put screen doors and make sure that all the holes around your house are filled up. And you know what? You could even use a fly swatter and swat them. That would be a mechanical way to do that. But there's also a cultural way to control them. That means that when they're in your crops, you can rotate your crops. That's what some farmers do. And they have, and make sure that you get rid of your garbage and your waste removal. That would be keeping things clean so that they wouldn't be attracted to that. And there's also a chemical way. Um, and that is what we use sometimes with insecticides. And with insecticides, we help them use the chemical the right way so that it would not hurt anybody except for the pests that we're trying to kill. And there's a biological way. Sometimes we can control insects with other insects or other predators like some kind of birds that come in that they like a certain thing. And so they, they'll eat that insect and help get rid of that one. Well, another bad bug you would think would be the fire ant. Remember that the fire ant, when you put your hand or your foot in it, oh, it just seems really cool to do that so that you can see them all come out trying to defend their colony. But if they get on you, they do bite you. And they make this little white 
pus thing that is really yuck and it hurts really bad. So we do not want to disturb those ants if we can, but it also can be a good bug because it does get rid of a lot of debris and other old insects or dead things. It goes and that's what their food is. And so it can be a good bug as well. So some bugs can be bad, some good, and some can be both. Better look at that ant. Well, is this a good insect or not? Well, guess what? It's not an insect because when you see these spiders, spiders have only two body parts, not like the insects that have three. And they also have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight legs. So did you count those legs to make sure that you knew if it was an insect or a spider? Well, I had the opportunity to find this spider. Someone gave this to me and this is a Bolivian tarantula. It is a good spider and that it does eat um, bad insects and stuff that's in the forest. So, you know, we don't want to kill them, but I want you to see, we're gonna take a picture and look. See if you can see those big teeth underneath that poke you and bite you when you're um, too close to it. They don't like for you to be um, handling them though. All right, boys and girls, I'm gonna show you some pictures and I wanna see if you know what these are. Ready? The first one. Did you guess an American roach? Good job. I didn't talk about this one. Do you know what this is? This is a bed bug. This is a bug that has a pierce sucking mouth part that when it bites you, it puts its mouth into your body and it sucks your blood. You do not want to have these in your house. What about this one? Oh yes, that was a mosquito. And it has a pierce sucking mouth part too. And it does the same thing. We do not like mosquitoes because they carry diseases like malaria. We want um, to get rid of those around our house. Make sure that you don't have any standing water so that they can breed. What about this one? Yes, this is a soldier termite. And I can tell you that because it has two big mandibles, a head, a thorax, and an abdomen. And it has a beaded antenna. These are the ones that get into your house to do the damage. What about that one? Do you got it? Yep, a fire ant. What is this one? Is this a hornet? It could be. Did you get that right? And what is this one? Remember, not an insect, but this is a brown recluse spider. This is one of the spiders that we have in Louisiana that can be dangerous and poisonous. We want to be sure to avoid those spiders, but normally they don't like being around us. They like hiding, but we t sometimes get them in trees or in closets or in spaces that's not frequented a lot but they are dangerous and they can bite us and, and poison us. So did you get all of those? Good job. You might wanna go on the internet and start looking at some facts all about these. Well, in summary, what is a bad bug? The bug that interferes in your life. And what can make a good bug be bad? When a bug becomes bad, only when it begins to interfere with our lives. And what is an all time bad bug? the roach, because it's been here for a long, long time. And why? Because he carries filth and diseases. Who's best qualified to do pest control? A trained professional, like the ones here at Arrow Pest Control. And also, I want to thank um, Miss June with Compel Communications. She's the one that helped put all of our slides together. And I want to thank all of y'all for looking and watching today.